Hey Internet, it's RJ. Thanks for tuning in to another show today. Now today's episode is going to be all about PNC and their credit card catalog. Now you might have seen PNC in the news as of late as they did just go ahead and get the green light from the Federal Reserve to close on a merger that has PNC buying out BBVA's U.S. bank operations. So with PNC in the news, I figured this would be a great time to go through PNC's catalog. There's definitely one gem to be found in their card lineup, but are there others? What are their points worth? What are the redemptions worth? And how does it all work? We're going to cover all that and more on today's show, so go ahead, press the subscribe button, and let's get to work. So PNC is headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've been there a few times. They actually have PNC Field. That's where the Pirates play. Nice baseball field. A little bit of backstory here. PNC was created from a merger of Pittsburgh National Corporation and Provident National Corporation in 1983. So it's nice when the initials work out. You can see where the name comes from. Currently, PNC is the seventh largest bank in the U.S. with $463.1 billion in deposits. They have a prominent presence in the Northeast, South, and Midwest. I think they've got branches in about 20 different states. Okay, now that we're more familiar with PNC as a bank, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the application rules before we get to the cards themselves. Now, unfortunately, PNC is one of those banks that's not a major player in the credit card space, so again, they do have some interesting cards. But as a result, there's not a ton of data points out there about application rules. So the guys over at First Quarter Finance wrote an article in 2019 where they basically phoned up PNC and kind of asked them about their application process. Now, you do not need a existing PNC banking relationship to apply apply for their card, though PNC does offer all your standard banking products. Okay, and now let's take a look at the points currencies that you can earn, then we'll talk about the cards themselves. So PNC has three different types of points currencies. They have cash back, they have points, and then they have miles. And this all is a little bit confusing, but I went ahead and did the research by reading through their card terms and conditions to summarize each one of these points currencies and how they work. So let's take a look at cash back first. So cash back is the most straightforward. Cash back does not expect you cannot transfer it to other accounts. You can redeem your cash back for statement credits or to a PNC bank account. However, the only catch here is you must redeem a minimum of $25 in any given redemption. Now, the second currency they have is points. So you can also earn points. You can combine other points earning accounts. So if you have two cards that earn points, you can kind of pool them into one account. There is no multiplier here like you would see on Chase for example, but you can combine them into one pool. Um, points do expire after 48 months. Now, 48 months is a long time, but I'm never really a fan of points expiring regardless of the time frame. Now you can redeem your points for statement credit redemptions, travel redemptions, or rewards redemptions, which is like gift cards and little things like that that they have available through their site. Now the last one we have is Miles. PNC does have a travel card or two in the rotation. So Miles, you can redeem Miles for travel related purchases. So you would use your card to make the purchase of your airline ticket, hotel, car rental, or cruises. And then you can go ahead and redeem those miles to those specific transactions. Now the redemption has to take place within 60 days of the charge posting to your account. Again, you must redeem at least 25,000 miles in any given redemption. Now, in addition to that, you can also redeem for a monetary credit. So a $40 statement credit would be 5,000 miles, but cash redemption is subject to a max of $1,000 per calendar year. Okay, so that was the points currency. So we'll go through the cards now, starting with the personal, and then we'll cover the business and you can see how it lines up. And on the other side of that, we'll talk about which cards are worth considering. We'll talk about what you actually get for the redemptions, what the value is worth, and then what your PNC strategy could be. First, we have the PNC Core Card. Now, this is a classic balance transfer card. Normally on balance transfer cards, the intro rate is always 0% for the first 15 months. So that's an interesting take. Um, next up, we have the secured card, so classic, no annual fee. Your starting deposit is going to be anywhere from $300 to $2,500, and that becomes your effective credit limit, and of course, that is refundable. Now, this is a card that they specifically call out that you have to open in branch. Next up, we have what I consider to be the star of the show, the cash reward, so no annual fee. Multipliers here, they're going to be capped in up to $8,000 in combined spend, but you get 4x on gas stations, 3 on dining, 2 on groceries and one on all other purchases. Obviously, that gas station's multiplier is the star of the show. Now we have the points card here. No annual fee. Your multipliers here can be 4x on all purchases. Now, the benefits here are going to be interesting. You're going to get a 25% points boost with select bank accounts. 
You can get a 50% boost with select accounts and one of the below, so average monthly balance of $2,000 in one of those select accounts, aggregate monthly deposits of $2,000, or combined average monthly balance of $15,000. And you can get a 75% points boost with the same criteria below, except this time we're talking about $5,000 monthly balance, monthly deposits of $5,000, or $25,000 in combined balances across PNC. And next up we have the Premier Travel Card. So annual fee is $85, but it is waived in year number one. Now multipliers here, 2X on all purchases. This is going to earn miles. Benefits here, no foreign transaction fees, travel protections that you would expect in the Visa, Signature, Luxury, Hotel collections. That closes out the personal cards. Now let's quickly transition to the business cards. And you'll notice a theme here, the business cash rewards. Very creative with the names. No annual fee. Multipliers here are classic 1.5x on all purchases. And this card does come with some travel insurances as well. Now next up, we have one of the funnier cards in the lineup. This is the PNC business card. So annual fee, $0 and 0% AP and balance transfers for the first 13 billing cycles. Now, I just love this card because of the name. Can you imagine how this marketing meeting went? Like, hey, Rick, what do you think we should call this green card? Um, um, business card. Got it. This man's a genius. Let's run with it. I, I just love it. But at least they didn't go with the cliched platinum card, I guess. Anyways, back to the show. Next up, we have the business points card. So no annual fee here, and you're going to get 5X on all purchases. But again, these are points. Now we have the business travel card, no annual fee, and you're going to get 1X on all purchases. Now we have an interesting take on a business card. This is the business options card. So the annual fee is based on net purchases you make on the card. So you can see the tiers here. You spend $49,000 or less on the card, you're looking at a $500 annual fee. Between 50 and 74 is $250 annual fee. 75K to 99K is 125. And 100K plus is no annual fee. Now, why would you want to put that much spend on this card? Well, this is a bit of a choose your own adventure. So we mentioned in the beginning how PNC has three different points currencies. They have cashback, they have points, and they have miles. Well, you can choose. So if you're putting all that spend on the card, then you could get 1.5 cashback, 5X points, or 1X miles. And the benefits here are also a little bit interesting. You can either get a pay in full option with a $250,000 credit limit or a revolving credit limit up to $50,000. And you can add a company logo for $350 if you're interested. All right, so there we have it. That was an overview of the PNC full catalog for personal and business cards. Now, the other thing that jumped out to me when I first started going through the catalog is on one hand, you have the cash rewards we just talked about with that 4X, but it's capped at $8,000. On the other hand, you have that PNC points card that has the 4X back, but it is not capped. So at a glance, you're like, oh, well, why wouldn't I go for the points card because there's no cap? Well, this is where the beginning of the video comes into play where we talked about PNC's three different currencies. They have cash back points and miles so the miles cards with the travel cards those are not great at all so we're going to just set those aside for now so we're really focused on the cash back versus the points and what are the differences because especially when you consider the PNC points card, if you have banking relationship with PNC, then you could earn 75% more points with that. But does that necessarily mean it's better than the cash rewards card? Well, to understand that, we need to figure out what these points are actually worth. Now, I don't have a PNC card. I do have a bank account with PNC that I'm going after a bonus for, but I don't have a card, so I can't really see the redemptions myself. But lucky enough, Bankrate did go through and do the calculations on three different redemptions to see what these things are actually worth. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So when we're talking redemptions, points are generally worth one cent per point. That is your baseline value. Now, unfortunately, as Bankrate goes on to write, that is not the case with PNC. So we have three different redemptions that they used. So the first one was for travel. A round trip flight from Chicago to New York City it was $197 when they paid with cash, or the equivalent in points was 66,000 points, making each point worth 0.29 cents. So if you want the calculation on that, they're taking the dollar amount divided by the points equivalent, and that's how you get your calculation. The second redemption they tried was an LG Stylo 6 phone. Never heard of it, but Best Buy sells the phone 
for 64 gigabyte capacity for about 300 bucks. You could get this from PNC Rewards Portal, but it's going to cost you 184,583 points, which works out to 0.16 cents per point. And lastly, a Walmart gift card, a $100 gift card costs 45,980 points, making each point only worth 0.21 cents. So again, going off of these valuations from Bankrate, even though the clear points is giving you a lot of points, um, what the points are actually worth is sadly not really there. Now, one more point on the clear points. It's really set up to you know help foster a banking relationship with PNC. The more money you give PNC, the more value, the more points you get, I should say, with the points card, and the same for some of their business cards. Well, if you have that much capital on hand with PNC, I would strongly recommend looking at Bank of America. Bank of America's setup is very similar where they have the honors status and there's gold honors and then platinum honors based on how much money you have across all accounts and products with Bank of America. And then they do the exact same thing. They give you more points like the Bank of America cash rewards. The top multiplier ends up being like five and a quarter percent back on a selected category per quarter up to a certain level of spend, but still it's a cash back card. They have some other cards. So if you're somebody like that, unless you just really, really love PNC, I would consider taking that and checking out the Bank of America side of the house because you're probably going to do better. Again, we just saw the redemptions and yes, you're earning a boatload of points, but what are those points really worth? And according to Bankrate, they're just not worth that much. So out of the entire PNC catalog, both personal and business, I think the cash rewards is the clear winner for that 4X multiplier. That's a strong recommend from this for any cash back setup. So anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with a new recap video coming to you on Saturday or Sunday to give you all the news you can use for this wonderful world world of points and redemptions. Of course, let me know what you guys think down below. Do you have experience in the PNC ecosystem? What are some of your favorite cards? Would you consider the cash rewards card or have you been redeeming PNC points and found that the value is actually better than reported by Bankrate? Love to get all of your thoughts about this and more down below. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.